When you're trying to break into the software development, people think the learning how to code is the hardest part. But we all know if you've ever been to a technical interview, the hardest part is passing the technical interview to actually get an offer, to actually get a job. I'm going to show you the one technique that you need to practice in order to pass a technical interview. So we teach this in Coder Foundry and it has proven time and time and time again that people that follow this win interviews and get jobs. It all centers around taking a project that you have built and learning how to answer technical interview questions by demoing the answer in your code. Today, I'm going to show you a mock interview that demonstrates this technique. We also went in depth on a live show that went through the hows and the whys and the mechanics of everything. If you want to watch that, check this out here. But if not, stay here for the technical interview, the technical mock interview to show you how this technique is done. And you'll see why. If you can do this, you'll get a software job. Hi, Bobby. How are you? Doing great. How are you doing? Uh, excellent. Excellent. Um, uh, well, just formal introduction. Uh, I am Antonio Rayner. I'm the director of technology here at Just In Time Manufacturing. Uh, we're a custom apparel company uh, that allows our end users to uh, design their clothing uh, as they like. You know, if you want a pair of three pocket jeans, we can make three pocket jeans for you and in the color and style that you want. Uh, we're looking for some junior developers to come on board and uh, help us out in designing this uh, web application. I hope it, then that you're a good fit for us. Okay, cool. So, um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, you know, I'm just like you, Antonio, um, regular guy, uh, you know, spent time with the family, may watch the occasional football game, may, may binge some stuff on Netflix or do some yard work. But um, one thing I did want to mention is something I'm working on right now is I'm working on a side project in NBC5 called a bug tracker. And you know what a bug tracker is. It allows you to submit defects um, or feature requests from your end users. And um, I can show you that real quick. It's built in NBC5. I think it kind of goes along nicely with what you're trying to do. And I think that would show the best way I can be a fit for the organization here if you want to take a look at that. Uh, yeah, we may get time to do that. Uh, right now, I'd like to proceed with the interview. Uh, okay. But, uh, Sure. Hopefully we'll get a chance to look at that. Yeah. Um, so here uh, at JIT, we, uh, we build in the Microsoft stack. Uh, we use other technologies, but mainly in Microsoft. And we've been using uh, MVC. Are you familiar with MVC? And do you know what it is? Yeah. So I'm very familiar with it. MVC is an architecture design pattern. It stands for model view controller. Uh, model being the shape of your data, the view being the user interface or what we commonly refer to as the web page and the controller sits in the middle its primary responsibility is to accept requests from the browser um, and then execute some code in the create action or the correct action and then maybe fill up the model and then return that data back to the view um, like i said before i'm building something in mvc.net 5 right now and I think the best way to explain the knowledge of what MVC is, just to show you real quick. So I'm going to share my screen real quick, and I'm going to show you kind of what um, MVC is. So this is um, code in my bug tracker, and the bug tracker um, is got a lot of models in it. But the heart and soul of this is the ticket model. And you can see here I've got a, a public class called ticket. Now, a ticket, according to my bug tracker, is the information where users will submit um, bug requests or feature requests to um, the company here. And it's got some properties that you might expect, an ID, a title, we need a title for the ticket, a description, maybe the date it was created. And then if it's updated, we may track an updated date. Of course, the project and some other fields that you would expect for any kind of bug tracking system. And so this is the model. This is gonna hold an actual ticket. Um, on the view side, I'm going to show you the create view when someone actually would create a ticket. And you can see here, I've got a basic form here that's going to go to the create action. But notice inside my view, um, I've got inputs that allow the end user to type in the title, the description, the created, the update data. And this ASP4 here is really going to resolve down to the name tag in HTML. And when they hit submit, this will go to the tickets controller and the create action. And inside that create action, I've got a bind statement here 
And you can see the names match what's on the form and they in turn match what's in my model. And all of these kind of naming conventions are important. Um, but this is how title, description, updated date, all those things are passed up from the form. And then it puts those into this model here, which is really now an instance of ticket. And you can look right here. Um, I, I went ahead and once I have an instance of type ticket, I can now um, change the create data, for example, where I can set it to now. And then um, at the end of the day down here, really what I'm doing is I'm adding the ticket with the context and this allows me to get to my database. And then um, I just call save changes, which um, persists my changes inside the database. And that's kind of how NBC works. And then finally it'll redirect to a new action called index and show the list of tickets there are. And so in a nutshell, that's what NBC is. It's just an architectural pattern to build websites. Nice. Um, definitely makes it um, very easy to quickly build an application. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned some of the redirects and I saw you talking about your controller. Um, are you, can you tell me a little bit more about the routing that you have in your MVC projects? Okay. So one of the core tenets of MVC, and this is all built on the ASP.NET MVC, is MVC routing. Um, it's built in for us. Um, but I've got another project that demonstrates kind of like how routing kind of works. And you right. may not know this, but I have a blog and I've hosted my blog. If you want to read about technology, I've got a great blog of about technology articles, but I had to write my own system. Okay. I wanted to write my own system because, you know, I wanted to learn about .NET 5 and this is one of the projects that I learned about. But okay. inside that, um, if you go to the startup um, inside of a, of, of, of a .NET 5 project, you will see in here, it's got this thing called endpoints and the default right out of the box, the default route is home, which is controller, um, action, and then ID, which means that if I type in anything in that browser bar, five other slashes, it'll attempt to find a controller by the name that's prefixed with the name that you typed in and then the action that it could go to inside that controller file. And that's how it knows how to route it around. If you type nothing, it's going to go to the home controller and go to the, the index action. Now it also can take in IDs and those IDs are like numbers. And typically that responds to like, you know, like an identity column in a database and our posts in this blog software has numbers, you know, internally, but I didn't want to have like go to blog slash, you know, detail slash 84, um, I want to do something more user friendly. So what I did was I created a new, what I called the slug route. And um, I put some static strings in here, blog post slash UR friendly slash slug. And this will look for any string or anything that I push after this slash. And if it matches this, it'll go post, go to the post controller and the action details. And if you look at the, uh, the blog real quick, you can see here, I've got a blog post put up creating store procedures. If you um, are curious to read that, um, you can see here, I've got blog posts, you are friendly creating store procedures. And so that is the route and that corresponds back to, um, if you look into the, um, the controller, the post controller, um, you can see where, um, I'm going to show you where that comes in and how I'm come, kind of consuming that. So in this details action here, it takes the string slug. Now remember in the startup, we're, we're pushing it to the details action and in the post controller. And um, what well, all I do is simply take that string and then try to look it up in the database using a link statement and then um, return the correct post, uh, push that in a model and then return that model to the, uh, the details view. Um, but that's mm -hmm. kind of how routing works inside of it. And so I've made my own. It's a long way of saying, uh, understand how NBC routing works. Absolutely. I can see that very clearly. Um, that's, uh, that's, that's interesting. I find that uh, very useful for uh, the, the project that we're headed towards building right now. Um, uh, so, so we're looking a little deeper into the code here. Okay. Um, and um, I see that um, you've got, you showed me that model. I want to know uh, uh, a little more about your knowledge about uh, classes and objects. What, uh, what okay. do you classes and objects. So as you know, objects and classes are the foundation of, um, of object-oriented programming. And so a class is just really a collection of methods um, that have implementation. Um, and then the object is the instance of that class that holds like specific data. 
So if you look back at the bug tracker and we go back to this, what we called initially the ticket model, if you notice here, it's an, it's, it, it is a class. And that class has this property title and description, a created date and updated date, as well as others. Um, so where that gets used is if I go up here and look at the ticket controller again, and I come down to this edit, this is a good example of, of where you can see it. So there's an edit action here and it's taking in an ID. And what it does is it goes out to the database and tries to find a ticket with this ID very simple kind of link statement. And then it puts that into an instance of ticket. It's getting its type from this link statement and then putting it into this ticket. And this is something um, that's called implicit. In other words, its type is defined by this um, object over here. And so now I have an object of type ticket. Ticket would be my type or my class and the object is it. And once I have an object, now I can affect that object. I can change the properties. I can update them. I can change them. I can do a lot of things with it. But in general, what I do here in the edit is I go grab it and now it's in that ticket, which we call model in NBC. And I return that model with the return view statement. Nice. nice, nice, nice. I see that. Um, so you've uh, you've done a lot of work with models here in uh, classes. I can see that you're understanding the instantiation of those. Um, I, I want to see if you've taken a, a, a little a step deeper into uh, classes and objects. Uh, how about interfaces? You know what an interface is? So in our general program, we also have this other thing which you called an interface. Um, so a lot of people confuse that with inheritance sometimes, and they kind of do similar things. So inheritance is, is when I go out, um, take my class and I inherit from a parent class, which means I'll get all the methods, all the properties, all the functionality into that class. Now mm -hmm. I can override it. I can make new methods and add on to it. But in general, I'm going to get all that functionality. Interface is a little bit different. Interface allows me to just put implementation details, which means that I've got to have these particular functions. And when you implement the interface, it's up to you as the programmer to actually code it up. So if you went back and looked at my blog, uh, my blog is one of the main things in any good blog is you've got to upload images. And I wanted to store my images in the database for various reasons, um, but I wanted to show you how I did that. Now I'm using .NET 5. And so this is a pattern um, when you're creating services and allows you to use dependency injection that you're going to use interfaces quite a bit. So one of those interfaces I wrote was this image service. And so my image service is going to encode an image in base 64 or byte array, or it's going to decode it and grab it out so I can actually display it. And so you can see here, I've got five methods. One takes it from a post file, and this is a built-in uh, Microsoft HTTP form file. So if I'm posting up with a multi-part form, second, if I just gave it a string name, it could go out and maybe look for it on disk and encode that image into byte 64. And then this decode array takes a byte array and returns it. But you'll notice this doesn't really do anything. This is just method names. And so what I have to do is make a concrete class. And so that concrete class is over here and I'm calling this basic image service. And you can see once I implement the interface by using this colon and tell it what interface I want to do, it's going to create or scaffold out all of the image decorations that I, and then it's up to me to provide the details, the implementation details inside that. And so that is kind of what an interface is. Now, how that really gets used and how we do that, um, if you go over here and look at our post controller, um, you can see in the top here, um, I've got an M or interface right here, and I've got this private variable that I'm calling underscore image service. And then I'm using dependency injection to basically take a, an instance of the image service and put it in this controller. So wherever I need to decode or encode an image, I can. So if I go down to the details, um, instead of the create, let's go down to the details, find the details. I think it's down here. Can't find the details. It's up here. There it is. 
So if I come down here to the details, you can see right here, I'm calling this image decode image post. And I'm, I'm, this is going to return a byte array, but it's coming from the form right here. So I've got some image data and, or it's coming from not the form, but the model itself, the post model. And so I've got a 64 bit array already in there. And it's going to decode that image and store it in this view data. And if you look at the view, I'm also injecting it in the view and then, um, it's basically going to set that byte array to um, an image tag. And if you look here, it's just basically, if you look at the implementation here, it's going to turn this string data image type base 64 and then the byte array right in there. And that's, that's kind of the round trip and how it kind of works. But um, basically to build services inside of .NET 5, um, the pattern is create an interface, build a concrete class, register that service, and then inject it wherever you need it to be used. Okay, I like it. I like it. Um, so with these applications that you've built here, they seem very interesting. Uh, have you used any uh, authentication and authorization? Right. So authentication is the act of logging in. And so we, that's, that's primarily seen when we actually have a login page. So we present users with a username and password login prompt. And so, of course, my blog and my bug tracker have implemented um, ASP.NET Identity. And that login page keeps people from just getting in anywhere they want. They need to be authenticated first, and then I authorize them to do certain things. For example, on my blog, I have a moderator role and I also have like an author role. So it would make no sense for me to create articles and then allow anyone just to change them. I just, I'm the author. I'll only me can do that, but I may bring someone in as a moderator to help me kind of moderate contents. If I see something objectionable on there, but how that gets put out in general is at the top of my, um, my post controller, you can see here that I've got an authorized filter on here and the roles that um, can do it. And it says roles administrator and author. And this simply means that I cannot bring up a page unless you're logged in and you have the role administrator or, or author. However, it is a blog and I want people to read it. So some of them I said allow anonymous for they can just search for blogs and things like that. Um, and then I secure the rest of the site so that the create or the edit pages are secure. Um, maybe the moderator of functionality is secure. And these tags allow me to do that in, in combination with ASP.NET Identity. Yes, 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 yes. That's good. That's excellent. That's really good. Um, it looks like you've got possess a, a, several of the skills that we're looking for for this for this for, the, for this position. Um, there's a possibility that uh, we'll have you come back in and and do some uh, a, a more of a technical interview for us, where we can maybe have you doing some coding uh, for us. But for now, um, that's all we have, Bobby. Um, do you have any questions for us at this time? Right now, I don't have a question. I just want to tell you that um, I'm super interested in just in time manufacturing. Like I said before, um, I would be honored to work here. I'm a customer. I like the things that you do. Um, it seems like a very inventive project. And I do think that the projects that I have um, go along nicely um, with the things that you're trying to achieve here. So um, I really would like to work here and I think that I'm a good fit. Um, so hopefully we can work together in the future. That would be great. That would be great. It was a pleasure meeting you. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, and we'll be in touch. All right. Thanks, Antonio. Welcome. Yeah. Okay. So now what you've seen is this technique in practice. Um, this is how you do it. And you're probably thinking, okay, Bobby, you, you've been doing this a long time. That I can't do that. Here's what I want to give you confidence on. Number one, all of the questions that I was asked during that interview are kind of junior level um, interview questions. There was nothing in there that you shouldn't know, especially if you're um, interviewing for C-sharp or ASP.NET positions. So what do you have to do? How do I get ready? How can I be as good as you are at this? What you can do is go Google the top 30 interview questions in the stack that you're trying to get into, and then start going through question by question, relating those questions to things in your code. Then find a partner um, that can be anyone and practice answering those questions as they ask, ask you. And remember, abstract to concrete. Um, abstract academic answer to a concrete demo 
demonstrating a project that you have built. And if you can get there and if you can know all 30, you'll probably get five during the interview. And if you can do this with five questions that you're asked, you'll get a software job. And that's how the people from our boot camp are doing it. They demo the answers to the questions. So to sum this up, remember this demo, demo, demo. Good luck and keep coding. <laughs>